Good morning, Kodja Biker here, and this is a slightly technical review by an idiot in a shed. Disclaimer, don't copy this, thank you. So first up, what's this for? Well, it's for turning on things like lights, heated grips, sat navs, whatever without having to cut into your bike wiring at all. It just connects directly to the battery and does it all for you. So the thing arrived when it came in a packet, which is uh, stapled and with a resealable pack. That's some instructions with the look of it on there and the thing itself. So I'm going to open it up, have a quick look what you get inside. Um, of a full disclosure, I bought this with my own money. So there's the Thunderbox unit itself, it has a green wire and a black wire which I'm guessing is positive and negative with multiple terminal outputs on each of those sort of snap terminals. It also comes with some sort of snap block, I'm guessing that that is so you can uh, put it into your bike wiring, which I hate these things. I would never use these. I don't recommend them. Though it's got some sealant in it with the look of it. These always let water in. I remember cars of the 70s and 80s just, yeah, not for me. But uh, you could use the white wire, I think, to take a uh, ignition feed from your bike. So for instance, this is an obese cat. He weighs uh, 14 pounds. That's one stone. Um, and I'm not sure what that is in kilograms. And at the side of him, there is the Thunderbox. That's for size comparison. In comparison to a jar of pickled onions, you can see it's quite a lot smaller. Here's a tin of Heinz beans. Again, you can see it's quite a lot smaller. A, sm a tin of sardines. It's smaller than them. It is on the palm of my Joy Division oven gloves. I've got Joy Division oven gloves. And something that's slightly bigger than, this is a dessert spoon. So I hope that gives you some idea of the size of this thing. Not him, that. Okay, so having now read the instructions, if you freeze that, you might be able to see that, be able to look at it, probably. What impressed me was it claims, and that's, uh, I'll explain a lot, that it takes less than one milliamp when it's in standby mode. That's when the thing's been turned off for a while, which seems remarkable. Standby current at 12 volt less than one milliamp. And then the other thing that uh, I didn't pick up on straight away is that this white wire can indeed be used to turn it on and off with your ignition, with a, light, with a slight delay, but it can also be used to turn the thing off. So you could attach that to a switch and Say for instance you had some fog lights or something you didn't want on all the time, you could have a switch, turn it on and off with that, and use it as a relay. The thing itself, it says, is uh, has no relays. It's all solid states. And um, it's set in resin. So all the switching's done internally. I'll be interested to see if it does get warm at all. So I'm gonna do a little experiment with it, test it out, and sort of mimic it's uh, being on a bike just to turn on a, a light well i mean obvious point to, to make is it's uh, for 12 volt vehicles so no good for you no it wouldn't work on this old six volt bike of mine unfortunately so purely and simply for test purposes here i have a 12 volt battery lead acid five amp hour one quite smaller than you'd find on most bikes but uh, good enough for this. I've also got a couple of uh, Chinese spotlights, which I uh, can't remember what, the, what they claim to be rated up, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to measure the current going into them. Uh, quite good actually, very cheap. I think they were £20 for the two. Bargain. See Dr. J's bike review on my channel if you want to know more about those. Um, Dr. J's had them on his bike for a while and they work great, so for the price, can't knock them. Perfect for this experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that to the 12 volt. 
I'm going to connect the lights to this and then I'm going to just connect a charger to the battery so that it ups the voltage which hopefully that will think the bike's running and turn the lights on and let's see if that works first of all before we go into anything um, slightly more technical right so to mimic the installation on the bike we'll connect this to these terminals here and then connect those two lights to but generally those two lights would probably be wired together and then just split the feed of the lights um, whatever but um, for the purpose of this test I'll just put them on separate terminals because it's it's all the same anyway just connect they all connect together and they all connect together so I'm not going to mess about I'm just going to fit the the uh, wires to the lights to these snap terminals snap in positive again I'm only guessing the greens are positive about to find out aren't we those terminals don't feel brilliant so now I'll connect the thunderbox so I've got a flashing green LED see that right so in resting mode I've just charged this battery but it was so flat it wouldn't work so in resting mode we've got a dim flashing LED to indicate that it's connected but uh, in standby mode the battery's resting voltage is 12.68 volts ish. The lights are off. Let's plug in this charger, which has a 15 volt fast charge as well, if necessary. And to simulate what happens when you rev up your engines, if you know that uh, catchphrase. So, here we go. Plugging in the charger. So, voltage is up to 14. Watch the LED, it starts to flash. Then it turns on, we've got the lights on, which are very good. Nice 13 half volts. Thunderbox is on, there's no, no heat at all. This is um, the componentry in there is set in uh, epoxy resin. So it's solid, there's nothing can move or there's no relays or anything, it's just solid state switching. So I'll now unplug the charger to simulate the bike coming to a halt. Run, 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 run. run. So it's gone off. You see the voltage dropping. The lead starts to flash. And it goes off. And we get that LED will flash bright for a little while. And then it goes into dim flashing. So I suppose the next thing I ought to do is check how much current it takes in standby. Now it claims after 24 hours it takes it shuts right back to one milliamp. Now one milliamp is less and the battery will discharge itself through its own internal resistance um, so it's nothing at all so in my initial setup I'm only measuring the um, amount of current the thunderbox and the lights take when they're turned on it's in a 10 amp range so it's not going to register milliamps on there at this first test so let's power it up So those lights and the thunderbox just take over one amp, 1.12, 1.1 1 .1 amps as they're warming up the uh, lights are taking less. So just over an amp for the whole thing. And when I disconnect the, or turn the bike off, goes back to zero again that's not accurate enough to tell us what the drain of a bike would be because the drain would be in milliamps so I'm going to disconnect the lights redo it on a milliamp setting 200 milliamps and see what we get so it looks to be taking about two milliamps in its standby mode in its pre standby mode so two to three milliamps so once it goes into its standby mode which is uh, no LED at all 
you can see on the two milliamp range, it's less than one milliamp, which is a tiny, tiny amount of current. It's negligible. It's not going to flatten your battery for weeks and weeks. So pretty much seems to do what it says on the can. Low current, <laughs> virtually none, so that it won't flatten your battery and it turns things on and off up to 16 amps. There is a 32 amp version of it available with two of those on it. So, so far, I'm not surprised Dr. J's been impressed. Um, that's going to be a useful thing one day, particularly to turn these lights on and off if I ever decide to use them. We shall see. Though it claims all these protections, you can see there, I might still be tempted to fit an inline fuse around about rated to the total current of uh, whatever accessories I'm going to use with a bit more, obviously. But that's just me. Belt and braces. It doesn't say it's essential or necessary in any way whatsoever. As I say, I have absolutely no affiliation to these people. I've purchased it purely and simply on the positive uh, experience Dr. J has had with his. And uh, I think I'll be able to find a purpose for that in the future. On that note, Cudge Biker is out.